Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Eric, your beautiful bride. Honestly, I remember when you came to our church and I felt the Lord say, I'm bringing generals to, to this house and you too are those generals and, and you're you're just beautiful people and you love people and you fight for people you inspire faith uh, because you live faith and I just want to encourage you that she can get up here and not talk numbers but if you knew the number we'd all pee our pants a little bit that's how big of a deal it was and I want to let you know it, it, it changes trajectory for their life but that's because they had to make a big faith step and if we could all it doesn't matter where you're at it's not equal giving but it's equal sacrifice what what can you do to stir your faith a little why did you all come here tonight what are you believing for tonight I wish I was gonna blow some sunshine your way, but tonight we got to deal with some real stuff. We're in a world right now that's a little chaotic. But as believers, and I hope you all are, and if you're not, I'm going to give you a chance to know who your Lord and Savior is personally. His name is Jesus. He died for you and me. And see, I was raised in a Christian home, and I understood that here, but I was 18 inches away from truth. 18 inches changed everything for me. 18 inches is going to change everything for you tonight. You were called to walk in victory in this life. Some people made a public declaration tonight. When you receive Jesus, you're born again, completely new in your spirit. You're a new creation in Christ. Some of you are like, man, I need that. I know I did, but I'm going to talk about some real truths tonight that we got to talk about, and we're going to pray, and things are going to get a little wild in here. Some of you aren't sure how to take that, and I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't either. I wasn't either. Uh, we're in freedom for the next six weeks starts tonight. Freedom is what we're going to be talking about. Freedom is what we're going to poke on tonight. Here's why I need to teach Christians this, because I was raised in a Christian family 30 years, and then I came to Awaken, met Pastor Jurgen, and then he was bringing in evangelists, he was bringing in healing ministries, he was bringing all this stuff, and every Sunday I was just getting rocked. Whether I was crying, whether I was... I loved Jesus, but I was in the world. I wanted to not do some stupid things. I mean, honestly, I felt bad for Pastor Jurgen. I had to wear out the aluminum at Carmel Valley Middle School or linoleum, whatever you call it. I was up on the floor like every Sunday. I had some stuff that I had to deal with. And then I'd go back being fired up and then all of a sudden I was having some of those same thoughts, going back to some of the same strongholds dealing with some of the same struggles. And man, I would just feel so much shame. I'm like, man, I just dealt with this. And I call Pastor Jurg and I go, this church thing isn't for me. And he goes, no, actually it is. I just need to get you set free. I don't even know what that means, Pastor Jurg. It means there's some spiritual oppression some demonic influence over your life and we're going to bust it off your life. Some of you still don't know. I'm trying to help my fellow Baptist brothers and sisters out. Some of my Calvary folk up in here. It's going to get wild tonight. 
If you're into sensationalism and you believe in that, guess what? We're about to bust that stuff because the gifts are for today. Healing is for today. Deliverance is for today. Getting set free is for today. And we gotta quit getting all religious and judging it because we're gonna bust that spirit of religion tonight as well. I'm done watching some of my brothers and men prayers circle the same struggles because we're gonna stop it tonight. We're gonna put our big pants on, boys and girls. Some of you just need to buckle up. If you start getting irritated, don't let your friend leave. If you care about him, we're gonna open up the altar pretty quick here and we're gonna start busting some stuff loose because it needs to happen. The Christian church in America has watered down the gospel and the potency of Jesus Christ and made him our little friend with no power. Tonight, we will receive power. We will clean it up because Jesus needs an army to help in the chaotic world. We are called to be the salt and the light. We are called to be difference makers, world changers, planet shakers, and we can't do it as Christianese, good people that keep sucking it up and tripping up every single day. Tonight, we draw the line in the sand and get free from bondage. I know it's, it could be, make you nervous. You know how come? I was that kid, nervous, 30 years old. I was nervous, well, what's going on? I watched my cousin get totally healed in this church. No doctors had an answer, totally set free, totally healed. I've watched friends get fully deli delivered, manifesting. We're not gonna judge anyone tonight. We're gonna set some people free so they can walk in total obedience to Jesus tonight. And I wanna share with you how to do it. Let's not be afraid of the altar. This altar needs to be something we get familiar with. I don't care if you've been a Christian five days, tonight, or 30 years. Never think you've raised above sin and oppression of this evil one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy and afflict you to take over thoughts, to get you thinking darkness over your life to get you beating yourself up, to getting you addicted to porn, to gambling, to lustful things. It doesn't matter what the sin is, check the box, that one that habitually gets in your mind. Anxiety, fear. We don't know when the end times are and we gotta quit saying it's next Tuesday. While we're here, let's get free and let's go live the kingdom of light and help people get healed and delivered. title of my message is Satan's Nightmare. My friend said it, I liked it. You are Satan's Nightmare. An empowered, victorious Christian set free from bondage and oppression is Satan's Nightmare. You are Satan's Nightmare. And until you believe that, you're gonna keep walking around the same struggles, trying to figure out why am I broken? You're not broken, God made you perfect. But there is an oppressor that wants to trip you up. And we're gonna deal with some stuff tonight. Listen, Pastor Mike Connell's in town. He married Shelly Griever yesterday. Her name is Shelly Lum now, married Ben Lum of this campus. And you can see a spark in his eye. He's touring all our campuses and he's here to do business. My job as the shepherd is to get you ready for that business, to get you ready. So tonight is just pregame 101, okay? Every Sunday and Wednesday for the next six weeks, it's gonna get wild in here. God has given you power and authority to deal with it, and I'm just gonna teach real quick, and then we're gonna pray. Point one is you have authority and power. Did you guys hear me? You have power and authority in the name of Jesus. Let's start acting like the Christians that actually know that revelation. And if you don't, we're gonna talk about it. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus declared, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And when he was crucified, and when the Holy Spirit came to that upper room, he said, but I'm leaving, but I'm gonna leave you with something greater. That Holy Spirit that resides in every believer, every Christian that received Jesus, needs to be exercised, stepping out in faith, and flexing your authority that Christ has given you. 
Too many Christians are just bounced around. Struggle, struggle bus, struggle bus, struggle. Get off the struggle bus. There are people here that want to pray for you. Those thoughts are not your thoughts. When facing spiritual battles of demonic oppression, remember that as believers, we can tap into the divine authority of Jesus. He commanded demons to leave. We too can exercise that same authority through faith, prayer, and trusting Jesus. We have nothing to be afraid of. I was afraid of deliverance ministry. Do you think it's easy for me to get up here and want to uncork something that not many pastors in America want to talk about? You can't put God in a box. Do I know what's gonna happen tonight? I don't, I just have to trust God. Last night I was preparing for a message as I was praying. It was amazing because I knew I just started having these thoughts. They weren't happy thoughts, they were dark. I had to get up and take authority over my mind. I felt the spirit of intimidation come on. I had to take authority over the spirit of intimidation. Then I went to this phone and Went to my phone just to look up a scripture. And all of a sudden, at 11 o'clock at night, my phone's blown up with somebody just cursing me out, yelling at me, calling me a fraud. I'm like, if this isn't spiritual warfare. So I had to take authority. I had to shut the phone down. God said, don't, don't be distracted by anything right now. Run towards me. Run towards me so I can give you a clear word. Number two, faith and belief. In John 8, 31, if you abide in me, you are my disciples. You know the truth, and the truth shall set you. 30 years, I thought I knew the truth. I was in bondage, bound up. It was amazing. I'm like, man, at 12 years old, a friend could show me one Playboy that his dad had. That image of that Playboy magazine just would run, and then you start wanting more and wanting more. And of course, I only looked at it for the articles, which is how I justified it. I'd gone to the altar, I've gone to prayer, I've done all these things, but it wasn't until Pastor Jurgen came and laid hands on me and I felt something expel and leave me. I've never struggled with it a day since November 20th on my birthday in 2006. You don't think the devil knows how to trip it up, throw the images, you just take that thought right there, devil. Take it right back to the pit of hell where it came from. Lord, renew my mind right now. I take that thought captive. I submit it to you. Take authority because God's given me authority. He's given you authority. Don't be subject to images. Don't beat yourself up. Just run to the altar. We're all gonna fall short. We're all gonna sin. He's gonna plant a, plant a seed and start to water it. Try to get you around the wrong crowd that brings you back into places you shouldn't be. We gotta shake some stuff loose tonight. We gotta stand in the full gospel, the full authority and get set free, mind, body, and spirit tonight. We have to exercise dominion over our own life first before we can go out there and lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. You are called to lay your hands on the sick if you're a believer. You don't have to wait for a pastor to show up. God's giving you authority if you believe in Jesus. You gotta have that in, in Mark 9, 23. He told the desperate father, all things are possible for one who believes. Deliverance is not solely an external act, but a reflection on the faith within. Jesus often asked those seeking deliverance if they believed. Our faith is the key that unlocks the power of God to set us free from spiritual bondage. When seeking deliverance, remember that faith is essential. Jesus didn't come just to save. He came to get you delivered and your life transformed. If your life hasn't been transformed, I'm glad you're saved and going to heaven. Now let's get the transformation part down so you can walk in victory and be done with some struggles, some insecurities, some financial. Why do I keep going broke? Because there's a spirit oppressing you to getting you think dark thoughts, generational curses, darkness, anxiety, fear. It's got to stop. You are called to step into something greater. And I would do everything in your power to get here the next six weeks. Whatever it takes to get into the house of God so you can keep hearing the message of freedom and deliverance and healing for the ultimate transformation of your life. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? I couldn't get a ride, then get an Uber. If you knew what I was talking about, you'd do whatever it takes to get to the house of God. 
If you knew that your life could be totally transformed tomorrow, how bad would it take you to get there? What would you do? The devil will cause every hiccup and speed bump and whatever it takes to get you frozen. And that's why we have America called the Frozen Chosen. Oh, we're going to heaven. But our country right now is going to hell because the Christian church hasn't stepped up to fight demonic activity. It's now in schools. We'll justify leaving our kids in school where they're learning perversion. What happened to me at 12, now these six years olds are learning out of their own books from public schools. And I'm not here to push the button of school teachers, be the light. But your kids aren't strong enough to be the light. Don't justify it. Keep their mind guarded from all perversion that is out there. It's perversion. There's a spirit of perversion that's ruining America. It's gonna take bold believers that know how to lay hands on the people and set them free. Persistence and prayer. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus confronted a stubborn demon that his disciples couldn't cast out. You might not get them all cast out, but I'm gonna tell you, in Mark 9, 29, it says, this kind can only come out from prayer and fasting. Deliverance ministry is often a battle and Jesus teaches us the importance of persistent and fervent prayer. Show up to men's prayer, men. I don't want women to be the prayer women of the church that are doing the deliverance. Men need to lead. We're called to be the king and the priest of our home. We want to teach you. Listen, men's prayer started out of insecurity, but now there's authority. You will come and get equipped in men's prayer. I need to speak into men because that's what's gonna help lead your family to victory. You're gonna have to take dominion over your home. We're all gonna have a rough day. The enemy's gonna stand there and try to intimidate you and beat you up, but we have to stand for our families. Divorce is rampant outside the church and inside the church. You must be empowered as a man to draw the line in the sand and say, not today, devil. You get off my family, you get off my marriage, you get off my finances, you get off my kids and get a little righteous anger up inside of you and you learn the scriptures. You rebuke the devil and he will flee. But we gotta teach you how to flex. Walk out with your full weapons. Learn the armor. Number four is transformation. Just, and I said it, he restored lives. Luke 8, 39, he told a man who had been freed from a legion of demons to return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Jesus demonstrated true deliverance is not just the absence of evil, but the presence of God in your home, in your workplace. God's love transformation can be transformation in your life. Love is the only thing that's gonna bring healing. We gotta love our neighbors, we gotta love through it, but we have to be equipped and empowered to set them free. You can't argue with a demon. You might even get a demon quoting scripture back at you. This is what I've learned over my last 16 years in this house. And as I start laying this out for you, I'm gonna open up the altar, we're gonna sing a, I'm gonna have the worship team come into it and then we're gonna start praying for people. But I'm gonna tell you what happens and how we open these doors real quick. But this is what I've seen and you need to check your boxes where I've seen Demonic oppression. Demonic oppression is a real thing. Christians, we have demonic oppression in the church. Pastors can have demonic oppression. If we wanna talk semantics, meet Alex for coffee. I don't have time to talk about it, but I will pray for you. Demonic oppression is a real thing and it destroys lives. Demonic oppression shows up where Christ can bring freedom, hope, and healing. The other side of that is mental and emotional breakdowns, repeated or chronic sickness, barrenness, tendency to miscarry, breakdown in marriage, families destroyed, continued financial insufficiencies, accident prone, and a family history of suicide. These are the biggest ones I've seen where there's demonic oppression. It's not your fault. There's a demon trying to destroy your life. And we're skipping through life just thinking I'm a Christian, everything's gonna be okay. There is a war for your salvation. 
But once you've submitted and given Jesus authority in your life, now there's a a war to make sure that you don't thrive, that your life isn't transformed, that you become weak so you can't influence anyone else to the kingdom, that your life sucks so bad that you can't share the gospel because no one wants to listen. But when you get victory, it's by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, and you share that testimony, and you share that God story, and you walk around with conviction in your soul, then guess what? People go, I want, I want what that person has. You know what you have? You have freedom. You might be one step in front of them, but you can keep chasing freedom, victory in every area of your life. It's amazing because these open doors happen through these 10 areas, and then I'm gonna pray. You ready? Sin and unforgiveness. Engaging in unrepentant sin and harboring unforgiveness is almost the number one thing to get a Christian bound up. We gotta forgive those that have trespassed against us. They don't get off the hook, God's gonna be their judge. But we, for our healing and our being set free, need to forgive. I've been let down, I've been stabbed in the back, I've been stabbed in the heart, I've been punched in the face, it doesn't matter. I gotta choose to forgive. Who is it right now that you need to forgive? I need you to think about it. Number two, occult involvement. Practices such as witchcraft, divination, astrology, occult activities can open doors to the demonic realm. You might think it's like, oh, I'm a Virgo. Don't even give power to the devil. I'm a Scorpio. I used to for years go, I'm a Scorpio in November. Yeah, you know what that means. I'm just cursing myself every time I say it. There's power and the devil wants you to keep saying it, edify it. People then, like once you break it off, it's amazing. I've Once I got that broke off because I didn't know what I didn't know. Just be like ignorance is bliss. No, it had a death sentence tied to it. Couldn't get victory in any area of my life. It's amazing how many people the next two weeks were coming up to me, what's your sign, what's your sign? I said, I see you devil. Addictions, for men it's pornography, substance abuse, gambling, behaviors that weaken a person's spiritual defenses, making you susceptible to demonic influence. These behaviors become strongholds that challenge you and lock you up so you can't get freedom. You have self-doubt, you have shame. And then you're buried under that POS, that pile of shame. I see what you're doing. I'm telling you right now, you gotta break that free and tell the devil. Some of you don't get it. You better start getting a fight on the inside of you and tell that devil to back off. And if you're around Christians, they're trying to talk you out of it and just say, oh, that awakened church. Learn your scriptures. We're living in the book of action, the book of Acts right now. It's unfortunate how many pastors I have to call BS on. And by the way, that's biblical stupidity. For those that were judging, we're gonna get you that demon brug, that judgment, I felt it. Idolatry, when we prioritize anything above God, it becomes a gateway for spiritual oppression. This includes worship of material things. I literally had to sell my favorite Porsche because God showed me it started becoming an idol. And out of fear of the Lord, I sold it within 24 hours because I was so freaked out. I didn't want God to remove his hand of blessing on my life. Did it suck? It did, but I'd rather receive God's blessing and freedom than what that Porsche could have given me. What has got you? Sometimes it's politics. Listen, some people are idolizing Trump, and I gotta tell you something. Fan, not a fun, he's not your savior. I don't care if it's on the other side of Obama. I don't care what it is. Don't ever put somebody in idolatry. It will get you an open door, and the enemy will beat you down. Some of you got the enemy's foot on your throat, and we're about to get set free. Cursed objects. Be careful what people give you. You don't know what's been cursed. I had a really nice gift given to me one time. And all this activity was happening, my doors opening, weird stuff was happening. 
my wife said something that's like, oh, ever since you got that, I'm like, no way. And I was looking at the thing, it was so nice, I know it was expensive. But they brought it back from even a nice trip doing Christian stuff from Africa. Pastor Jurgen's like, try to burn it. Tried to burn it, didn't burn. Poured gas on it, didn't burn. Called back Pastor Jurgen, told him the bad news. He said, break the curse off it. I stood over that thing, I broke the curse off it, threw it back in the fire, and it went to ashes within seven minutes. I didn't know what I didn't know. All that demonic activity stopped in my house. Let's not be naive to the enemy's schemes because he is doing whatever it takes. You thought it was a gift. You thought it was innocent. And it was choking me out, life out of me, dabbling with the paranormal. Getting your hand read, palm reader, you think it's innocent? It's not innocent. Tarot cards, not innocent. Ouija board, not innocent. Some forms of yoga, not innocent. If they're chanting, you better chant your way out in tongues right out the door. They're opening a door of spiritual oppression over your life. You might have a pretty crystal, but you don't know what it's opening. Is it worth it to wear a crystal around your neck that could have you choked off? ruining every aspect of your neck. You're just like, oh, it's just a crystal. It doesn't mean anything. No, no, there's power in some of those things. I'm just telling you, I'm not here to judge it. I'm here to tell you, if you've been getting pushed down and beat down and struggling, you better look about what you got on you, in you, or thinking through you. There is such thing that can shut you down. Emotional and psychological trauma, emotional wounds, divorce, death of a loved one generational curses it's not even you it's been passed down the number one in america thing that's been passed down freemasonry it's number one in america you better find out if anybody upline from you has ever been involved with masonry it is a door and it is a spirit that is hard to bust off and you better take authority over it and you don't you don't stop praying over that until it is finished i'm telling you false teachings and beliefs be careful what you're watching. I mean, innocently, I liked it, and I know they ripped off the Bible, but it was just a little three degrees off True North, and that was the movie The Secret. Some of these gurus, I was going to seminar to seminar, spent over $200,000 going to these personal development seminars. Matter of fact, Kevin, I think you met Carly at one of those. Don't worry, they've both been set free, but I'm just saying. Here we are chanting things, doing things. They're ripping off the Bible and they're taking what they like out of the Bible that has power and putting it on their mojo. And then we get sucked into the seance of what that person's doing. We got to be careful. How do we renounce it? You guys ready to do this? Good. I'm going to pray for us. So I'm going to teach you real quick how to renounce some things. And if some ailments or things or stuff is popping up in your mind, we're going to walk through this. And then we're gonna bring up the ministry team and I want you to come down the altar if you need to get set free from anything that I've talked about tonight. I'm gonna have the worship team sing a song, tremble. And then we're gonna go into this and pray. And we're not, we don't need to worry about what's going on to the left or the right. I just wanna tell you what's gonna happen. Number one, we're gonna repent. Well, first we're gonna affirm your faith in Christ. Number two, we're gonna humble ourselves. Number three, we're gonna repent and seek forgiveness. Anything we've been struggling, just repent. It's missing the mark. If you miss the mark, let's repent. Let's get back on the mark. Reject any claims of influences that contradict your faith in Christ. Number four, you're gonna forgive all others. I'm telling you, it's not worth holding on to bitterness or anger. Number five, we're gonna pray and go after this. And you're gonna continue to pray. And then you're gonna fill this void with the word of God. I wanna take us through a prayer, so I want us all to stand to our feet. And then right after this prayer, and it's all right if someone manifests, it's worth it. But I just wanna teach you kind of what's gonna happen because there's some important things to do. Because we need to release every curse over our life right now tonight. This is the beginning. We're going to keep going after it. We're going to take a stand with God. And there is a thing on breath you're going to expel. If you hear someone start coughing, just say amen. We're going to expel some demons tonight. 
doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. You just start praying. If you're nervous, just pray. God's giving you authority. There's nothing to be nervous about. You just got to take your life back tonight. But I need to know, it's just you're going to breathe out. Whenever you do hear someone manifesting or screaming, it's usually a demon stuck in their throat. You just need to help them cough it out. Just tell them to breathe, cough it out. I know some of you are looking at me. It's all crazy. Listen, I'm just telling you what happens. For those the believers that have been set free and you're in deliverance ministry, then you just start praying. You don't worry about no one tonight. We got plenty of people who can run up in here and pray for you if you don't make it down to the altar. It's just a real thing. It's nothing to make Christians nervous. It's just funny that it's just not taught in America. And it's not even funny, it's just sad. But just know, Jesus on the inside of you, are equipped to deal with every demon tonight. Every demonic oppression, influence, things that you struggle with. Doesn't matter, you're like, oh, I'm 16, I, I just have testosterone. We all do. Calm down. Like Will Ferrell says, shake and bake. Shake and bake. I don't even know why I said that, but that was for somebody tonight. This book I'm referencing right here is called They Shall Expel Demons by Derek Prince. The other one that I was watching last night that got someone all mad at me, wasn't even near my house, was I was watching Greg Locke's movie on Get Out in Jesus' Name. Every believer should watch it. If you can handle one a little bit up from there, then watch Nefarious. Okay, we're doing this. I want you to repeat after me. You ready? And then we're gonna do worship, and then during worship, stuff starts to stir up for you, the altar's open, and then we're all gonna pray. But this is how we're gonna do it. I need you to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God and the only way to God, and you died on the cross for my sins, and rose again, that I may be forgiven and I receive eternal life. I renounce all pride and religious self-righteousness and any dignity that has not come from you. I have no claim on mercy except that you died in my place. I confess all my sins before you tonight and hold nothing back. Lord, I confess. Now fill in the blank. Whatever you need to do between you and the Lord, I need you to confess it. You just sit there a minute. I need you to confess some sins you've been struggling with, some maybe issues that you've been tripping up over. Just keep it out. Just keep it going. It's between you and the Lord. I repent of all my sins. I turn away from them, and I turn to you, Lord, for mercy and forgiveness. By a decision of my will, I freely forgive all who have ever harmed me or have wronged me. I lay down all bitterness, all resentment, and all hatred. Specifically, I forgive, name them up between you and the Lord. Forgive them right now. I sever all contract I have ever had with the occult or with any false religion. I commit myself to get rid of all objects associated with the occult or false religions. Come on, here we go, Lord Jesus. I thank you that on the cross you were made a curse that I might be redeemed from every curse and inherit God's blessing. On that basis, I ask you to release me and set me free to receive the deliverance I need. I take my stand with you, Lord, against all Satan's demons. I submit to you. I resist the devil. Amen.
Now I speak to any demons that have control over me, and I command you to go from me now. In the name of Jesus, I expel you. I want us to worship. If you need to come down to the altar during this worship song, come down to the altar, and then we're specifically going to pray and set people free. If you've dealt with anything, get down to this altar. We're going to deal with it tonight. Jesus. Come on, we're going to declare his name tonight. Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, you sing this out, Jesus. Keep singing this as people come down. For those Jesus, of you, just pray. Pray in the Jesus. Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray for your spouse. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, come on. Heavenly Father, God, I pray over everyone that's coming down here right now. I come against the spirit of depression, anxiety, and specifically fear right now. I break every stronghold of fear in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that they're hungry to be set free. God, I thank you that angels preside over them. God, I thank you in your authority right now, in the authority of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus. Lord, they are set free from addiction from fear and anxiety, from mental anguish. God, I thank you we break every stronghold, every agreement that they've come under agreement to accept fear. We expel fear in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now that you're setting them free, healing them right now, mind, body, and soul. God, I thank you right now, renew their minds. Lord, set them free, heal them, heal them. Thank you, Lord, right now, supernatural healing over their life. We come against that spirit of fear. You get off them right now. You have no place in this house. You must flee in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and take authority over every demonic stronghold right now. Let their minds be healed. Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship. Come on. We're going to keep worshiping. Listen, service I know is over, but we're going to keep praying. People need to get set free and delivered. Just don't forget about your kids. Go grab your kids at some point. Come on, let's just pray for our kids as well. But thank all the volunteers and Kids Church tonight. They're staying long for us, but we're going to keep praying. When you feel you got to go, service is officially dismissed, but we're not going to stop praying. We're praying for every last person. We're getting victory tonight. Thank Jesus over and over on your ride home. Thank you for my freedom. Thank you for my freedom, Jesus. Thank you for my freedom. Get in the word tonight. Refill your soul tonight. Keep thanking him for his mercy, for his forgiveness, for his grace, for his victory, and for your freedom in Jesus' name. Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.